This isn't real. Yeah. High Strung is about a whiny, annoying asshole who needs to die because he won't shut the fuck up. I wish I weren't dead! That actually is the plot of this movie. Imagine it's 1994 and America is laughing its collective balls off at a young rubber-faced Canadian named Jim Carrey, as he seemingly scores overnight success with Ace Ventura Pet Detective and The Mask. Okay. One day you're browsing in a video store and you see Carrie on the cover of a 1991 comedy called High Strung. Huzzah, you instantly cheer. Another Jim Carrey movie. You take the antique VHS tape home expecting another 90 minutes of blockbuster butt-talking hilarity, but instead you get this guy. Stupidest of all bugs. I mean, you, you've seen them, right? I mean, they, they sit around cleaning their hands all the time, you know? Like it matters. Everything in it just so makes you sick. Backyard. There's a piece Yesterday, of I read about this guy. She's totally self-indulgent. She could listen to her own voice and then for hours. Brother. Not only Okay, you think to yourself, blue, this guy must be the main character. Her, but I would love to know how the earth can just keep from In fact, Carrie isn't even credited in this movie. It's like he had the foresight to say, "Hey, I might be the Riddler in 4 years. I better not sully my good name with this performance." And it is your responsibility to make sure they're not let down. Co-writer Steve Odekirk plays Thane Furrows, which sounds like the name of a pig farmer who dies on Game of Thrones. And because this is one of those fourth wall breaking comedies, he starts with a little monologuing. I don't need this, you know. Flies are the filthiest creatures on the planet. The number one carriers of disease. And he doesn't stop. Let's say somebody kills Amy Lou Rogers. I think they should lock him in a cell. I bought these natural watermelon popsicles. They actually put watermelon seeds in the popsicles. Seeds in the popsicles? That's great! I love that! This is approximately where my horrifying realization set in. The entire movie is like this. Ugh! Yes, the story unfolds entirely in one day, and for the most part, inside Thane's apartment. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, hey, there's Jim Carrey! What the hell? What the? I must need sleep. Throughout the movie, Thane keeps getting these strange phone calls threatening that something will be coming for him at 8 o'clock. Yeah. And after watching these moments, I'd really like to see Odekirk act in a horror movie. What does that mean? What the hell is that? Eight o'clock? Is this some, some jerk or something? It was something about gutting me. Yeah. I'm in the house. <laughs> Remember when that plane crashed in the snow and some of the people survived? But they didn't get rescued for a really long time, and they actually had to eat the other passengers to stay alive. Oh, seriously? We're talking about the movie Alive now? Moral decision. If your life depended on it, do you think you could do it? I don't know. I've thought about it a lot. This is not a movie. You know what this is? This is stand-up. Steve Odekirk recycled his unused stand-up bits into a screenplay. I go into my backyard, there's a piece of dog crap in the ground. It's a piece of dog crap. Fly sitting on it, cleaning his hands. <laughs> How incredibly stupid they must be. So I go into my backyard, there's a piece of dog crap in the ground. A piece of dog crap. Fly sitting on it, cleaning his hands. <laughs> How incredibly stupid would you have to be? What is this down here? It's there again. What is this shit? What is this shit on here? It's there again. What is this shit? Thankfully, there are some other less annoying characters who stop by Thane's place for various reasons. 
I don't mind you pounding on my floor, man, but could you do it with a little rhythm? Because you are really messing with my head. Yeah, there's Fred Willard wasting four minutes of his career as an insurance salesman. Well, there is one little problem about buying these policies from you. Oh, what's that? I'd rather be dead! If it weren't for Happy the Clam, you wouldn't have a job! There's his overbearing boss, played by Denise Crosby. Happy the Clam could be rolled up into a little ball and shoved up your butt! Yes, that's right, Denise Crosby. Thomas F. Wilson plays his patient and understanding BFF, or should I say B-I-F-F. And is it me, or does he look more like a young Donald Trump here than he did as Biff? Are you playing around? No, I swear. Jim Carrey finally shows up at the dreaded 8 o'clock, and you're not going to believe who his character is. I'm Death Man. Death? Yup, he's the Grim Reaper, because why not? Well, you make a crummy death. Shouldn't you be wearing a hood or something? That was a little fashion thing I went through. I was depressed. Watch this, though. Being dead is great. Director Roger Nygaard would later re-team with Denise Crosby on the documentaries Trekkies and Trekkies 2, while Odekirk went on to make Kung Pao Enter the Fist and a whole bunch of short films involving his thumbs. I find it hard to judge this movie as good or bad because I really don't have anything to compare it to. I don't hate it, but this is not anything I'd ever watch again. Maybe this would have worked better as a pulp comics episode on Comedy Central, but the film, understandably, has quite a cult following, and for a small experimental endeavor, it's definitely worth a watch. Bad Panda. Hey everyone, Bad Panda here. Thanks for watching, and if you like this video, then why not subscribe for more Obscure Film School and other content? Feedback is always welcome, so feel free to like or comment below. See you next time.